Bueno, buenas tardes a todos y nos incorporamos otra vez a este Ecoland Summit y nos, ahora la parte que nos toca es hablar sobre el momento con inmunoterapia y la duración de la inmunoterapia, si es para progresión, si una fecha definida, en fin, eh, esto es una, es una cuestión abierta. Y hemos eh, establecido dos grandes ponentes, que son Antonio Calles y Santiago Ponce. Antonio, que conocéis todos, está en el Maranhão. Santiago Ponce, que está conectado desde París, que está allí. Le mandamos un saludo a nuestro compatriota, que está ahora mismo en esta Rusia. Hemos dividido entre hasta progresión o con una duración definida, pues no porque uno esté de acuerdo o no, sino porque puramente establecer el mayor límite posible y sacar el mayor partido a esta situación que yo creo que está todavía en discusión por parte de todos. Lo que vamos a hacer antes de nada es hacer una votación de forma que sepamos qué piensa la audiencia sobre si está a favor del tratamiento de esta progresión o si hay más gente en el mundo, eh, más definido en el principio. Eh, no hay que poner la pantalla en grande, sino la que la aparecerá la pregunta y os pediría So, in theory, you will see on the screen um, the question. Otherwise, well, I can't really see it now. I don't know if the other panelists can see it. I can't see anything, says uh, the doctor. Can the technician help me out? Because I do not see the question, please. You won't be able to see it, but the users can see it. Please start voting before we dive into the presentation. Santiago Ponte will start because uh, um, uh, Antonio Calles had a problem, okay? No, Antonio is already here. Yes, Antonio has just connected. Give him a, a few seconds so people can vote. While Antonio joins in. Hello, Hola, Antonio. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, are sí, you ready to sí, start? Sí, ayudar, eh? Yes, I just uh, uh, arrived. We were saying that there's been um, a parallel voting. Everyone is going to vote uh, in order to see if they're in favor of one thing or another. And you will see who have you convinced and that person will receive something that Carlos has bought. Uh, we will show you in a minute. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Let's see how can we leave Madrid? It isn't an easy thing. <laughs> I don't know if perhaps a, a flying of uh, perhaps um, the, the present is a safe conduct. How many people have voted for this? Only five people, six people have voted. Can we leave the voting open? So we can leave some time for this. It, it, it be closed before they finish. And when they finish, we will do the same, the second voting, okay? Thank you. If you all agree, let's begin now because apparently Santiago has to leave. He has a prior commitment in Paris. Okay? Antonio, bien, whenever pues, you want, you eh, have the floor. Muchas gracias. Eh, thank you very much. Eco, I'd like to thank the Foundation and the Scientific es que es Committee for organizing pues, this session. El, el it is an interesting debate, the one mí, we eh, have to liderar. share, uh, eh, Dr. Bonfiel eh, no sé myself. Cuál de los dos será más persuasivo, I don't know que esto who is going to be more <laughs> We are so kind. I'm saying in translation. When it Estoy says share screen. Y solo veo, um, mm. 
eh, interpretación en, en la bola. Ya está, ¿no? Vale. Perfecto. Bueno, pues este es el título, tratamiento con inmunoterapia hasta Treatment with immunotherapy and the progression. The patient must continue their treatment as long as they respond, they do not have any toxicities. And we will never discontinue the treatment because we believe the patient will ultimately uh, benefit from the um, treatment indefinitely. And this is the role I will defend and um, the other doctor will defend uh, the opposite for a predetermined duration. These are my conflict of interest. Where are we now? This is the phrase that summarizes what I'm going to tell you now. I have no evidence, neither doubt that the treatment with IO or lung cancer needs to be continued until progression. I cannot uh, convince you otherwise because the evidence is quite limited. What is the rationale? Why to continue treatment until progression? Because we are in, we are talking about the metastatic uh, uh, um, disease and we know that the duration of the treatment has to do with the duration of the um, PFS time uh, free of symptoms and that can be translated in OS. Uh, lung cancer uh, is uh, really a subject to Uh, target um, therapies, the metric cell maintenance, and squamous uh, histiology is up for maintenance mm, treatment. And while the treatment is, uh, he, uh, is um, responded well by patients, uh, it is improving overall survival. Is it also applicable with immunotherapy? But that does not have to be the case otherwise. Discontinuing the treatment for a patient as exposes them to a risk, an indeterminated risk of a, a tumor evolution. The immune reaction requires a re-stimulation. And there is also a risk for the retreatment or not being effective. Nobody um, claims that in treating with an immunotherapy, while it progresses, they will respond again. Therefore, the duration is arbitrary. We have set up some guidelines with no uh, biological rationale, and it is an arbitrary question why to discontinue the treatment in a specific moment. What is the uh, PD and PK rationale? There isn't any clear PK PD uh, rationale. This is uh, phase one of uh, nivolumab. This is Uh, um, the data extracted from this uh, trial, the average of antibodies was 12 days. That's why we opt for this initial dosage. And the occupancy of the receptor exceeded the average lifetime of a drug. The antibody uh, was attached to the receptor anti pd one for a duration up to two, three months after immunotherapy. This also has to do with the uh, toxicities, sequencing with the drugs and so on. So if you see the images to the right, what is obtained uh, with a single dosage or with multiple ones, the prolonged treatment with uh, repeated um, stimulation produces a constant blocking of receptors and high PDL1. Therefore, we may think that although it's true that the pharmacodynamics do not have lots to do, the blocking of receptors are more prolonged when the exposure is constant. Why? The question is, why two years? Why to stop when patients have done it for two years and they are responding well? I have no answer to this, with the exception of what I can I'll share with you the design of clinical trials. This is the profile of all uh, treatment options, chemotherapy alone, immunotherapy alone, chemo plus IO, and ipilimumab. I have um, described with the 
read a star clinical trials where e immunotherapy was uh, limited and um, it's always two years and all clinical trials uh, phase three mention pembrolizumab it is a strategy of a specific company to say our drug is two years whereas the other treatments uh, uh, tocilizumab, nimbrolumab and others the duration of the treatment is indefinite uh, under progression so why two years this is set up by pembrolizumab because this is the way it has been decided by the um, uh, clin clinical development same happens with previously treated patients only pembrolizumab has a predefined dosage of two years the others are administered until progression which is interesting because it is the opposite of what was done in uh, phase one nivolumab um, 003 it was a fixed duration up to two years and pembro 001 uh, for pdl1 positive until progression and then it, it was uh, contrary to phase one what evidence do we have today this is the most compelling scientific uh, evidence a more the most rigorous one this is a trial that checkmate 153 recently uh, published in the journal of um, clinical oncology where the primary uh, endpoint was to measure the severe toxicity those patients after a year of treatment could continue with invo antiprogression or to stop nivolumab retreating nivolumab if the patients progressed uh, negatively there's a lot of bias because in the moment of randomization many of them weren't uh, randomized therefore we can have a bias there but the chart at the end of the day to the chart to the right those discontinuing the treatment after a year start progressing immediately and so it happens during the follow-up they continue with nivolumab and apparently they delay the treatment and the progression this is the biggest evidence we have today to determine that the continuous treatment is probably better than discontinuing the only conclusion we can argue here is that a patient is with with uh, is responding is better not to stop for another year at least it shall be a year and this study give us a warning sign perhaps it's not interesting to stop with these uh, patients the objective of the study was in this one and it is subject to different biases uh, 4.7 months is the average survivals when patients continued with nimbolumab and the multivariate analysis an obvious factor that is worth restating when they have reached a year of treatment and with partial response they had better benefits than those um, with the disease so those benefiting the most from continuing with the immunotherapy are those that are already benefiting if they reach a year and they hadn't benefited so much they continue with immunotherapy and it doesn't seem um, that's going to clearly be the difference and the multivariate uh, analysis in terms of psf for different factors uh, give us a ratio of 0.56 with the continuation or treatment. Um, what about the overall survival? We have to be careful, but there is a clear trend towards um, an improvement um, or with a 0.62, the confidence interval. And this is the known pre-planned objective. And this is very important because 86% of patients who discontinued treatment with involumab after a year were treated with involumab. Um, they had access to NIVO and they could have been treated with it. In fact, that was 83% of them. And despite this, there are um, differences in um, overall survival. Perhaps you have lost the, the overall survival for the discontinuation. 
this leads to a double um, assumption, but this is precisely the biggest evidence. What do we have in terms of long-term follow-up patients treated with immunotherapy with uh, pembrolizumab? This is uh, related to the uh, PDL1 expression. And in first line and other lines, uh, we can see uh, 30 percent to five years in patients with a high uh, pdl one expression. Uh, these are patients who were under treatments and on, on definite uh, treatments. The keynote phase one study, when they had undergone five years of treatment, it was compared with three years and they wouldn't increase the number of uh, toxicity. The immunomediated uh, toxicity happens during the first two years, but after two, three years of, of treatment in this uh, study, toxicity, immunomediated toxicity doesn't influence those patients who had previously received uh, other um, uh, treatment. Perhaps the, the risk benefit is not bad to continue with IO if the patient has undergone treatment for uh, two or three years because the rest is not going to expose them to an excessive risk. This is the update of OS on previously treated patients in second line, bigger uh, OS among patients, but as opposed to what we saw on patients with melanoma, um, the plateau is not so clear here the curves continue going down. The percentages are very, um, very little, but the number of uh, alive patients continues to go down. Um, this is a crop to 35 cycles, two years of treatment. There may be patients who are healed, but there's also patients that are not healed. And as we um, uh, see the evolution of uh, um, maturity, it is not flat, uh, flat or it's not a plateau as in melanoma. I have uh, put an arrow here for the 35 cycles. And at this point, I draw a horizontal line, patients who are not progressing. Um, this is not the case when you discontinue the two years of treatment. The very highly expressed PDL1 patients and those above 1%. Uh, reflect a, a progression per discontinuation. Just be careful because when you stop the treatment, it is a compression. If we continue with Pembro, won't there be? Perhaps the checkmate study. Uh, I consider this in two years, but we do not have such evidence and the discontinuation events lead to this. What happens with patients with um, um, 35 cycles of treatment? One in 10 patients who uh, undergo Pembro at the beginning uh, complete the two years of treatment. Most patients have already given complete response or partial response. So it is a very important bias which patients get to that critical point of two years, what happens when they discontinue the treatment? One third of them experience a progression. You discontinue the treatment, and this is what we saw before on the survival rates. And perhaps the most important thing here is that um, despite the fact that many of them were treated again with Pembro, we lost the answers in 32% of the patients Yes, there are patients responding to the new treatment, but 32% did not respond, and 27% weren't treated uh, after progression. We do not have data or information about the type of progression, or if there is an injury, millimetric injury, this is a real provision. Do we have a biopsy? Do we have a pathological confirmation? We need to take this with a pinch of salt. We have also carried out the analysis. <clears throat> this is first line data with very interesting survival data. Let's see that after discontinuation, the figures continue to go down. 
in the different uh, acres of Palau, and they do not stop falling very simply near plateau uh, in lung cancer as it happens with melanoma. And same happens at the five years when they undergo the 35 cycles, events continue to happen. Even in the next two years, there is a percentage of 20% of um, progression because of discontinuation. Um, so do we need to understand like 35 cycles is the ideal duration? The same analysis is undergone. Um, these are very few patients who um, undergo these uh, cycles, 25%, a, a little bit more than 10% are patients who were uh, in an objective response. But if we see here what happens, 48% um, had a progression afterwards and seven patients died during that progression and two patients were in a complete response as we can see here. And then discontinued um, treatment, they progressed and one of them died with no treatment. This uh, leads you to believe we do not have the accurate information, but this um, leads you to believe that if they discontinue the treatment, you cannot treat them afterwards. What would have happened had we continued the treatment? And I think this is the, almost the end of the presentation. These are the retreated patients, 33% responded, and all of them or most of those patients are patients who had a responded when they reached the uh, 35 cycles. And 12 out of 21, 57% of them received the second uh, dosage of penbrolizumab. Uh, and 10 patients, which represent 25% of the patients, did not receive a um, treatment uh, once the progression. Why? Why weren't they candidates? Regarding the um, uh, side effects, these adverse events. Um, and to conclude, the optimal duration with um, uh, different immunological anti PDL checkpoints are needed at least two years of treatment and the Clinical trials, uh, stage three, uh, back the use of the treatment until progression uh, with drugs uh, whose design do not require an interruption. Obviously, the discussion um, cannot underpin the risk of overtreating, toxicity, and cost. This is something that we will have to discuss. And the potential guidelines um, is alternative dosage, uh, especially in. COVID-19 periods, spacing up um, a dosage every six weeks in order to minimize the uh, the exposure of uh, patients in hospital, not continuing with a scheme every two, three weeks, but every month or every six months, and even uh, um, other schemes. So the immune system is not saturated and to re-stimulate it every three or six months. And we do not have long-term survival predictors, patients who have undergone the entire response who are not going to need any additional treatments. What do we do in these cases? Uh, a pet tech, uh, a metabolic answer after two years that could lead us to believe that uh, uh, perhaps this is an excessive treatment to these patients. and. Those patients that present a, a complete metabolic response are the best candidates to discontinue the treatment, whereas the disease persisting uh, radiological or, or meta, uh, metabolic uh, disease continuing, perhaps in these patients, we may continue the treatment. But these are things being assessed, evaluated. Thank you. And um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Lovely. Uh, thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you very, very much for your very compelling and comprehensive presentation. Um, until now, seventy-seven until progression and the 
the one for fixed dosage. Let's see if Santiago uh, reverts this uh, apparent benefit. This is like Real Madrid uh, uh, winning against Borussia de Dortmund. We were losing and then we ended up here in Bernabeu. Santi, you have the floor. I would like to thank the scientific uh, committee and the AK uh, um, Foundation for continuing training of our, you know, um, doctors despite the COVID-19, despite the authority. Thank you for the effort and thank you for inviting me because it is a, a, a pleasure to be with uh, Dr. Calles and Dr. Proventio. We are also friends and colleagues. And uh, they made it easy because I knew that Dr. Calles was going to do a very detailed analysis. And he has done a detailed analysis of fantastic data. Yes, fantastic, which supports what the trials say, the most robust studies until today, which is a, a, a fixed duration. The first line study undergo the same from uh, being uh, indefinitely to be definite uh, duration. The, the speculation, and I couldn't agree more. We have uh, many questions, and we need to generate academic studies. But these are um, the thing. The question is, what can happen with these patients when you visit one patient tomorrow morning? in your office what is your best evidence at that moment in order to decide if it's two years one year six months and this is um uh, similar to what i thought what do we know about the second line of treatment and when you take a look at the studies globally with different populations uh, squamous, non squamous. But if you take a look at the overall survival, they are more or less the same. And we thought that the differences could be Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, or white label Coca Cola with no major differences. But there was an important difference in these studies the duration of uh, the treatment. In this case, we had two studies with two approved uh, drugs, Nimbo and uh, APRA. In LTS patients, if we haven't reached this, if the curve is flat or not, if we have a live patients five, 10 years, 10 years afterwards, we have no data. It is with other pathologies with drugs that do not have a specific duration. We do not have the same range, but similar data. So we can assume that this strategy, patients that after two, three years do not have any toxicity, continue the treatment. Every 15 days is a bit complicated. The development of the early stages and the durations are have a lot of caps because we have moved from two weeks to perhaps six weeks. And we have evidence not to stop ever in this type of patients. And we will go back to the same study and 30 presented. And Nibo on an early stage, the patients with big best survival, the treatment was capped to, you know, 24 months. Uh, and this is arbitrary. There isn't any rational evidence, consistent evidence that supports it. But on an early uh, phase, this is the way it was developed. The second line studies of nivolumab were done in such way. Uh, the opposite happened with Pembro. Nivo did not uh, design this early stage study with a uh, fixed uh, limit, but the LTS patients most of the treatment was around 24 months. Therefore, this information led us to have the simulation. This is the best um, uh, evidence. 
uh, although it's a bit um, uh, mannequin. The study in the United States has a limitation of two years. They haven't explained why it is one year. You may think that they decided it's one year because it's positive to continue until progression. What would have happened if this study, or perhaps it would have made sense to do it for two years or continue it throughout time? This is the only evidence we have. We have to bear it in mind. In the context of second line, which would be the youth setting right now, it doesn't make sense properly. Probably it, there would be a limited duration. The patient numbers are very small and we have friends to continue beyond a year, which is positive. And there's a difference between those who have a deep response or those who are stabilized. Maybe you have to use common sense for patients treating the second line, but this is not going to be the standard situation and this study is just hypothesis for us. The second line, we had uh, pembrolizumab. It's a highly selected population, only pd one positive. We assume they, they were similar because as our ratios were similar, but this study had a better population because it was PD-1 positive. The other ones included negative, but there's a limited for two years. There's a limitation for two years. With all the limitations that Antonio has explained, the lines are similar to what we have explained with the first study of NIVO and Adesso, where the treatment was not discontinued. So assuming that progression is just because we have stopped is an assumption just an assumption for a study, but we cannot uh, ensure, ensure this. I'm not going to explain about this because Antonio has gone through it all. There's a hyper selection of these patients that reached 24 months. Obviously those who didn't have any toxicity and who didn't progress completed the study. So it's a hyper selection of patients. This Hyperselection of patients makes you comfortable enough that when the time comes, if a patient had a good response, we could discontinue the treatment as it was done in the study. This is the rationale. The Spanish group used to carry out the reply study. This is a highly selected group of patients, those who reached 24 months. The replace study has studied what happened with people who progressed before that time and also to increase the number of patients. There are very few patients who reach this time limit of two years. You may have the feeling, a positive or negative feeling, you may think, okay, 60% is not responded. Well, but 43 is responding, 43% is responding. So let's speak about toxicity, but not speak about toxicity itself. These drugs, Antonio has said, after two, three years, there are a few problems in general terms with this. Uh, this is toxicity. You feel ill, perhaps, without the need to receive treatment. You go to hospital, and at some point, there's a toxicity and without any doubt, financial toxicity. What patient doesn't need it, we don't need to treat them because they're not going to relapse, and this is an assumption. And with this, we can treat another patient in another line. Let's bring all this to the first line. I think that here we have some of the keys to limit the treatment time. This assumption of two years as a, as a mantra, we need to feel comfortable with this time. Global survival, overall survival, it doesn't have a stable plateau. We can assume that this is because we are discontinuing the treatment. And then there's this other thing that with 
two years of treatment. We have data that we have never collected, but we need to still we need to improve them. And a potential study could be which patient, based on which data, could be continued after two years or discontinued. Antonio has shown this. I don't want to insist on this. As we see in second line, this is a highly selected group of patients, those who reach two years of treatment. It's shown for patients who had a complete response. There's a progression of the uh, um, disease. There are stabilizations, and when the treatment is over, they are the patients that have maintained the disease. What's the difference between these two patients? Well, it's interesting to see this difference. We have a very solid study in first line in monotherapy, which maintains the survival data in this case. This is the chart, which is similar to the one in first plan. This is the big problem we have now. It is with the duration of the, uh, it's not the duration of the treatment itself, it's what happens with uh, patients with a good PS, they've gone through immunotherapy, they're progressing, should we retreat or not? And if we do, with what? In this case, with Pembro. One of the things you can ask yourself is, why are there patients that don't receive this? Well, perhaps, and they're not included here because they're receiving Pembro or any other drug in combination with other drug in a different study. And this is not covered as such within the study plan, which only recovers the patients patients preceding Pembro within the study. And then we have, we have a different approach. Pembro, first line at different years. The study we have is designed this way. Therefore, the clinical practice should follow the design of the study. We haven't said what happens with nivolumab and ipilimumab. We've seen the second line studies, there was no time duration, but it was in an early stage. In first line studies, take me two to seven and eight, the treatment is limited to two years. This is the start of the time uh, limit of this treatment. And here we have an, another discussion in many other tumors and in lung cancer, curses of CTDA4 were not persistent throughout time, perhaps four courses, maybe, in other tumors. But here, reasons are not very consistent, but here we see an extension of EP until two years. And I ask myself here, we would need to treat patients for two years with Ipilumab, or perhaps six months is enough, or perhaps with more space, with bigger periods. It looks like this plateau Antonio has mentioned is flatter, and that we have a percentage of patients that are progressing less. But this is not achieved by more courses of EP, because if you see the median, it's a small one. And perhaps it's around four, six months of treatment. And with that, it may be enough. So we would have evidence that patients don't continuously need uh, their immune system to be stimulated to get a response. We have very immature data regarding 9LA. 
This is similar to what we saw in 227. And perhaps same way we reduced to, to cycles the numbers of chemo, we've already reduced NIVO to two years with this time limit that didn't exist in the past. Perhaps we should ask ourselves whether we need it for so long, two years. So the general trend when designing studies is to reduce the time of the treatment with immunotherapy. In this case, if you want this toxicity cost, which is a bit more weird, you can have some surprises after the safety net of uh, one year. It's manageable and there's a learning curve. In my case, I've been highly exposed to these schemes of combinations. It's something you can handle. But for patients, an added cost, there are an added cost of toxicity and also an added cost for the system. And as conclusions, I think we, we all agree that the evidence is what we have, whether we can make assumptions. There's there are heterogeneous designs of studies with different times, even inconsistent with the drugs themselves. The drugs may have changed from non-limit to limit. As Antonio was explaining, Pembro changed in phase one, and after that, its development has been always time limited. There are not many reasons. I would say it's just observing the patients to justify this two years, which is an assumption, but apparently it's consistent in time. It is true that in the second one, we have long survivors with schemes without specific duration and others with specific duration. And it's true that in first line, the most sound evidence we have right now, both with monotherapy with Pembro and a combination of chemo and immuno with Pembro and at the time of studies are designs with a limited uh, duration. I think that we have to bear in mind uh, the limitation of the objective toxicity in patients. I've mentioned financial toxicity of treatments. If a patient doesn't need to continue with the treatment, why would we invest uh, that money or exp uh, expend that money in that patient? And the conclusion here is the need. I would like to convey to Dr. Provencia for academic perspective studies that assess the different treatment schemes, which is highly, this is somewhat highly complicated to fund. It's very complicated and perhaps only by dividing resources we could do it. I think it's clear that they're needed. Now we need a bit more time so that people can vote. You minimize your screen and to the side you see the question. We're going to leave a few seconds. We're going to wait for a few seconds so that everyone can vote. Santiago, you're in a different place now. You know the amount of resources at public and private centers. Your institution has private and public resources. People speak about uh, scientific studies uh, in France, and I laugh because it has nothing to do. We don't have any resource for academic studies in Spain. We have this thing they have every year in the middle of August, with a period of 15 days, and they distribute things like this randomly because you don't understand what you see. I think it was 5 billion euro. Actually, here, I think at the beginning of the year, they're going to start a study funded by the French government, which is going to assess the duration of treatment at different 
delivery schemes, not that frequent, which is something that we have not discussed, but we could. It's interesting. Perhaps we don't agree. We don't want, we would agree to not to continue forever if it was every four or six months. Those of you who are with lymphoma have a lot of experience with other monoclonal antibodies that have evolved with time. And perhaps we don't need so much time and we don't need so uh, such a high frequency. And this is what this study is going to study. There are several cohorts, patients, not just with lung cancer, they're going to contribute some rationality to how much therapy we need to use with these patients and for how long. We're going to stop for a while. Do we have the uh, uh, vote, the results? Who won, Real Madrid or uh, Paris Saint-Germain? Well, in this case, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, sorry, in this case, Real Madrid. We don't have Mbappé. But we have Vinicius, which is the result. They're not giving me the result. Well, let's continue to talk. In lymphomas, the maintenance with rituximab, it depends whether it's first line or second line. It's every two, three months. So it's not adapted to anything specific, but there are reasons behind it. The immune system probably doesn't need to be reinforced every two weeks or six weeks. Real Madrid won 77 to 22. So now, after we finish, we have a present by Camps. I think it's a trip to Cantabria. I think it's the only place you can go from Madrid. But you have to go through Castile before. No, but I think it's allowed to go through regions that are closed. Probably uh, regarding clinical trials, we need trials that allow for a dynamic not the classical rigidity of endpoint, 500 patients. And also, after the vote has been, uh, we, we know the results of the vote. Well, when you have a patient in front of you with this disease, and until now, Except for patients with some mutations, we weren't treating them with Nevo or a test or whatever. You've been treating them for four or five years. We have never had this experience of having a patient who's alive with a good quality of life in this case. And that's good news. I don't want to worsen that situation. It's great having scientific evidence, but if this patient has no toxicity, if this patient is living a normal life, it's no risk for them to come to hospital, except for COVID, as Antonio was explained. Well, fighting against what we've seen this past year, that this disease, well, we didn't have this experience with patients. I understand that it feels like a cliff, like I'm just going to stop the treatment. And if I lose this, although we have um, little data, we can say, okay, there are many that I'm not going to recover. And as Antonio has explained, we planned based on maintenance strategies. In adenocarcinoma, we had improved a lot because of maintenance because we didn't stop. So I can understand that with the specific 
patient sitting in front of you with the name and a surname, for me, it's complicated. I think you need to talk about this with patients. I try to explain things to the patients, try to reach an agreed um, decision. They usually decide to continue. Some specific patients decide to stop. I, this is my experience. I don't know about you. With that indication, uh, treatment has a specific education in our hospital with stop. We stop according to the indications. For those drugs in the indications in which the treatment is until progression, what we are doing is talking to the patient after two or three years of treatment. And what we are doing is, is, is a pet type, a, a pet city, to see what we see. And we find a bit of everything. There are patients in which there's absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. Probably these are the most difficult patients because you need to have the talk. I don't know what else can I give you if we continue with this. Patients very often is what you said. They feel uh, reassured. They say, if this is doing okay, this is no problem for me, I'm going to continue. But there are some profiles from patients that say coming here to the hospital to see other patients makes me feel as a uh, like I'm sick like I'm ill, and these people value uh, not coming so frequently to hospital. So they decide to stop after two, three years of treatment, and they stop, and it's okay, and they've taken the right decision. Then we have other types of patients where uh, the disease is still present. And here, we think that this persistent uh, disease, oligometastatic disease, well, we have biopsied them, and we're taking some of them to, to um, surgery, and the tumor was persistent. The tumor was persistent, but all metastatic uh, disease had disappeared. It's really complicated to sometimes to convince surgeons to remove lesions in complicated places, but sometimes they do it and there was tumor left. We try to apply ablate, ablation treatment, SRT or surgery. I think the studies do not capture that. Yes, the daily practice. It would be nice to collect all this information because we are seeing interesting things, things that we don't share that are not there. This is about common sense, sense of medicine. And until you don't have a patient behind, in front of you, you don't think about it. Maybe, maybe it's a the family, they say, why don't we remove this? Why don't you discontinue treatment? And you, then you think about it and you say, okay, it makes sense. You talk to your colleagues, the committee, and people say, oh yes, yes, of course. And you discover ways that no one showed you before. So with this uncertainty, everything is open. There are many possibilities, always trying to have as much as efficacy as possible and minimizing toxicity. We've, we could defend both positions because it works like this. I think that when I said before, here there are reasons, and we see in the curves that these patients can be better than those receiving anti-PD-1, anti-PD-1. And the anti cta 4 well, these patients, their lymphocyte repertoire could be bigger. And perhaps here we're going to see the plateau we'll hope for, and perhaps they don't relapse and they don't die. But at least with PD-1, PD-1, this is open to discussion and there should be academic studies that would provide us with the answers. Thank you very much.
the situation of immunotherapy is having dynamic tools, reliable tools to assess how the patient is responding or not. Yes, CT, PET, but there are many false positives in PET with immunotherapy. I think we should use different assessments that we don't have so far. We're at the end of this session. I think we can finish right now. I think Santiago had to leave, right? So thank you very much, both of you. It was a pleasure listening to you. You've given us lots of information. We all have the same doubts, but it was really well explained. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank Echo Foundation for this invitation, but to, to continue with our agenda. Santiago, I hope everything's fine with you.